For the last few days, we've been learning how to write a net ionic equation, but you don't really know why we're doing them yet. What's the point other than to get a few extra points on your chemistry tests, right? Uh, the net ionic equations do have a purpose for scientists. Uh, net ionic equations are important to us because they tell us whether or not a double displacement reaction is going to occur or not. You guys have seen sometimes in lab where you mix a couple chemicals together and it seems like nothing happens, but other times you mix some things together and you get a pretty good reaction out of it. There's a scientific reason for whether or not a reaction takes place. For purposes in our class, you can make the assumption that anytime you see a synthesis, combustion, or a decomposition reaction, any one of those three that I give you, you can make the assumption that it will work. But you'll see that not all single and double displacement reactions work. Uh, this, for the next couple of days, we're going to be seeing how you can tell if a double displacement reaction is going to work. And then later on in the week, we'll start to learn how you can tell if a single displacement reaction will work or not. What you're going to be on the lookout for in a double displacement reaction you have to have one of three things happen. You either have to form a solid, you have to make a precipitate, you have to form a liquid, and remember there's only three pure liquids that you're expected to know for, for our purposes in our class, water, bromine, and mercury. There are other liquids out there, but those are the only three that I would expect you to recognize as being a pure liquid in a problem. And then the third way a double displacement reaction would work is if a gas is formed. And the only gas I'd expect you to recognize off the top of your head is carbon dioxide. Uh, that carbon dioxide gas actually usually comes from the fact that after you do a chemical reaction, if you see H2CO3 on the products side, that H2CO3 is always going to break down into water and carbon dioxide. And that's where you get your gas from. So, why is it that you have to form a solid, a liquid, or a gas for a double displacement reaction to work? Well, let's do an example where everything is aqueous and see how that shakes out. So if we did a reaction between magnesium nitrate and sodium iodide, and we'd have to figure out the products, magnesium would go with the iodide, sodium would go with the nitrate, we'd have to balance out our charges, balance the reaction overall, and then use our solubility chart to determine the states of matter. If you look up magnesium nitrate, sodium iodide, magnesium iodide, and sodium nitrate on your solubility charts, you'll find that all four of those things are soluble. They dissolve in water, so we put aqueous for all of their states of matter. If they're aqueous, that means that we have to break them up into their ions. So magnesium nitrate gets broken up into a magnesium ion and two nitrate ions. The sodium iodide breaks up into two sodium ions, two iodide ions, and so on. Well, when we would go to take that complete ionic equation and turn it into a net ionic equation, we go to cancel out the spectators, the ions that are exactly the same on both sides of the reaction. So if you look at the magnesium on the left, it starts as a plus two aqueous ion and it ends as a plus two aqueous ion. So magnesium's a spectator, it gets canceled out. If you look on your nitrates, we have two nitrates on the left, aqueous, and then we have two nitrates on the right, aqueous, spectators, so they get canceled out. Our sodium ions are exactly the same, and our iodide ions, exactly the same. Everything is a spectator, everything cancels out. So all the ions are basically in your test tube, in your beaker. They're just staring at one another, saying, you do something. No, you do something. I'm just a spectator. But no reaction actually takes place. This magnesium iodide 
and sodium nitrate? That never really happens. This is fake. It never actually makes magnesium iodide and sodium nitrate. In reality, there's no reaction at all. So how do we show that there's no real reaction? What we would do, we still have to write our reactants side of that reaction. So we'd still have our magnesium nitrate, that's aqueous, and our sodium iodide, also aqueous. But on the product side, it doesn't really ever make magnesium iodide or sodium nitrate since everybody's a spectator, nothing really happens. We are gonna put NR in the products place there, and NR stands for no reaction. So you guys are gonna be trying four different reactions here to try and decide would these four reactions work or not. So what you're gonna look for to decide will the reaction work or not, um, for number one, looking for those precipitates forming, you're gonna be using your solubility chart to find any insoluble products. So those are the ones we've been focusing on the last few days, and you'll probably be the most familiar with those solid products. Um, a liquid double displacement, you're gonna maybe get water as a product. You wouldn't get bromine or mercury as a product in a double displacement reaction because double displacement reactions are always compounds plus compounds, but we might get water forming. So just something to be on the lookout for, for that water formation. Uh, you might remember when we were doing balancing earlier in the year, how I said water, sometimes when you're balancing, is easier to write as HOH. If you end up combining a hydrogen ion with a hydroxide ion to make one of your products, that means that we've made water a liquid and so that reaction would work. So be on the lookout for that water for your liquid products. And then to be on the lookout for those gaseous products, since the only gas you're gonna be expected to know is carbon dioxide, where is that carbon dioxide gonna come from? What you're gonna be on the lookout for for those gaseous products is carbonic acid, H2CO3. And H2CO3 falls apart basically right away into water and carbon dioxide. There's where you get your gas from. The water would be a liquid. So that's the thing you're gonna be on the lookout for for your gaseous products is if you get this H2CO3 on the product side then that H2CO3 is gonna fall apart into water and carbon dioxide, and there's the only gas that I'm gonna expect you to know and recognize off the top of your head. There are certainly other gases out there, but that's the only one that I'm gonna expect you guys to recognize on your own. So, now it's your turn. You're gonna try, take a look. We're gonna be doing four reactions, so we have to do a complete um, first, a balanced chemical equation, a complete ionic, and a net ionic. Some of them will work, and if so, you do the whole thing. And if it doesn't work, then in those that products part, that blank, then you just write NR and move on to the next problem. Good luck! <laughs>